we were kind of playing a game with words, uh, Orchard and I. And let's try it with you too and see how it, how it turns out. Close your eyes and take a couple of deep breaths and relax. And uh, picture an event that you're thankful for. Picture the people and the, what was said and done. And then just say thanks. And what happened within you? What emotion, what energy movement did you feel within you? And I'll pick, you, you can pick the same event or incident person or a different one. And tell them, thank you. And monitor the emotion, the energy movement within your body. Were they located in the same part of your body? Was one stronger than the other? And now the same event or a different one. And you're not saying anything, but you're reflecting and you're feeling gratitude, gratitude that you had that experience, that you experienced that event. How did you feel now? Our experience was that the emotion of gratitude was much stronger than thank you, and thank you was stronger than thanks. Thanks can often be you know, you're thanking a cashier, you're thanking a waiter or waitress, and it's just the amount of sincerity there. Yes, you are, but it's how really thank, but how thankful are you? You know, so there, there, there is a difference as as uh, what Orkin wrote in her book, Laura Joy read, regarding gratitude has a different definition than thanks or thank you. And I think most of us in the, on the path that we're on, uh, we do we do have thanks. We do our and we do express it, and we do have gratitude. And what I would like to uh, attempt to help you with this evening is to expand your awareness of what is deserving of gratitude and of your feeling of thanks. Most of you know that you have working with you a group of spirit beings. They're not in physical bodies. They're beyond the range of the five senses. They're angels. They're heavenly guides. They're uh, master teachers. They're ascended master teachers. But perhaps the most important one of all is your own divine soul. And do you know that your soul is but a fragment of a higher soul? And it is a fragment of yet a higher soul. And those fragments, if you trace it all the way back to its origin, it goes all the way back to the creator of our universe. There is a connection, and these souls are connected. You can, if you want a visual, they're, they're connected by a silver cord. Each so, uh, soul closer to the, the creator is of a higher vibration, and perhaps we could say it's it's a larger, it has more of the creator's essence in it. And we're at the end of this chain of souls. And it is from the creator and down through this chain of souls that the life force energy flows into us. What would we be without life force energy? And the answer is we wouldn't be. Thank your soul. Thank your soul for being open to receive this life force energy from your Christed soul, which is receiving it from your I am soul, which is receiving it from your the next higher soul. And thank this whole chain of souls 
that's bringing life force energy to you. And I think you, it's important that you know, it isn't they're just carrying life force. You're their teacher. They've never experienced this level of creation, this third, fourth, and now fifth dimensional level. They've never experienced wearing a dense physical body. They've never experienced being a male or female. They've never experienced feeling separate from the creator. And they're experiencing all of that through you. They're not just with you to learn through you or from you, but they're also here to assist you, to help you. And golly, to tune into that and to ask for help. And it can, it can come from that high of a level it's impossible to even imagine anything that you cannot accomplish if you're working in harmony with this chain of souls. Have you ever told them thank you? Have you ever expressed your gratitude to them? Probably not. I never knew they existed or that I was connected. Well, hopefully, if you accept what I'm going to say, you do now. So, Expand your gratitude to include literally the entire universe because you are a microcosm of the universe. It all exists within you and you exist in all of it. Huge, huge concept. And how in the world can that be? I'm just me here on earth. This, well, you're a part of the whole. And just like in a hologram, every pixel of light, if it's amplified sufficiently, contains the entire universe, the entire hologram. And, and we are a pixel of light within a universe of light. Okay. I mentioned our spirit family. We have angels and guides and teachers and our soul. And they too are learning from us. And they too are, most of them are with us 24 seven. And they're here, they're standing, they're all standing by all of the time in case we ever want anything. And we ask, you must ask, that's a requirement. And the other requirement is you must be open to receive. Now, please know that you can only receive at the level of your consciousness. And you can only receive to the extent that your, your chakras and energy centers within your physical, mental, emotional, and soul bodies are open to receive. You cannot receive, if you were uh, to talk to the creator of the universe and ask something from that level, there's, I don't think that there's any way we'd be able to receive it. But certainly, to talk to your Christed soul, or to, to talk to your soul, or your Christed soul, or even your seventh dimensional I am soul, if you're functioning at a high level of consciousness in this physical body, you can likely receive what it is they are giving. You can receive their help. You can, you can get your answers to, uh, to your questions from that level of consciousness. There is a sense here of oneness, of unity. Uh, again, we're a microcosm that, of all that is. Their separation is a pure illusion. It cannot exist. It, it, it's, it's utterly impossible to exist. And anytime you have that feeling, release it or replace it with the feeling of being at one. And by expressing gratitude, well, when people thank you for what you do, you're more apt to help them the next time they ask, aren't you? And I, I'm not sure that it works, uh, that maybe it's that important with higher aspects of us, but it is certainly polite. 
to, to, to express gratitude for all that they have done. And we are helped so much, not only by our spirit family and by our, our earth family, but can you imagine what the earth does for you every day? Providing oxygen and air, providing water and food and nourishment, providing all of the necessities for a strong, healthy, vibrant body, a healthy mind, and it shares so much of its beauty with you, with the sunsets and the sunrises and the flowers, and, and for us in Michigan, the snow. And tonight, as we were eating dinner, we were looking out over a field that's we're about 50 feet above it and on the edge of it, and there were about 13, 14 deer down there eating pumpkins. Because people come and uh, when they're done with their pumpkins, they, they, they put them in that field and the deer love pumpkins. So they're, they were out there and they come out every evening and graze either in the grass or just to socialize. And right now they're grazing on, on pumpkins. And we put some out right next to our house here and sure enough, they came right up and, and two days the pumpkins were disappeared. So we have so much gratitude for the nature, the beauty of it, uh, the vast variety of life of it. To be aware, to live in a, a, an attitude of gratitude is to live in a world of love. Uh, to me, gratitude and love are very, very close in, in their frequency. They both make me feel good. Just an idea or a suggestion. Keep your eyes and your heart open for things that please you, that bring you pleasure, that help support you. Be aware of them and you don't even have to say it aloud. Express it in your own heart and mind. A word, a feeling of gratitude. And if you do that, you can't do that and be depressed. You can't do that and be angry or upset. You, it, 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 it's a real nice, mellow, loving feeling that you're creating within yourself and you're projecting that out through your thought and emotion of gratitude to whomever you're directing it toward. Each evening as well, in fact, all of our meals, as we sit down to, to eat, I have my hands over my food, my eyes are closed, and I'm giving thanks for it. And I'm not just giving thanks for the food, but I'm, I'm asking, that the spirit beings who are in that food and everything has, has, has spirit energy in it. I'm asking that it be made perfect to nourish and energize and keep this, these wonderful bodies healthy, the physical body, mental body, emotional body, and soul body. And then I also add, I ask that abundant blessings be sent out to all that were involved in bringing this food to this table. And when you consider that there are not only the farmers involved, there are the, uh, a number of truckers involved from the farm to, to the, the, the storage facility, to another one to the factory where the food is processed, another one delivering it to the warehouse, another one delivering it uh, to the retail store. and. So, and, and then, you know, the, the person that stocks it in the retail, in, in the retail store, the person that, that handles it in, in the warehouse and, and, and so on. So there, there are just a, a whole boatload of people that are involved to get that food to your table. And then in my case, my beautiful wife, who's a wonderful chef, the love she puts in it as she prepares it. So, the food then becomes very, very special. And I feel it, that it's, it is a lot more beneficial for my body 
than if I just sat down and said, boy, it looks good, smells good, and dig in, okay? So to live a life of gratitude is to, to me, it's to live a life of love, but also I equate gratitude with joy. And if you're living love and joy, wow, a lot of good positive energy that, that you're enjoying within yourself and that you're sending out to others and to the world. So make it a gift to yourself for this season and for the rest of your life. Live in gratitude and share gratitude with everyone and everything that you encounter. And then truly, you too will be blessed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carl. That was absolutely wonderful. I am almost vibrating with the gratitude here. Just hearing your voice is is so comforting, and and that in, in itself is wonderful. Um, one thing that I would probably ask, and and I'm not really asking so much for myself, is just for people who may be watching this video later on. Um, somewhere down the road. I can remember times in my past when it seemed like life was hard, life was a struggle, it was hard. Every, everything was, it seemed like the world was against me. Mm -hmm. And for people who are in that space, who are coming from that background, how would you recommend that they find a feeling of gratitude to hold on to, to help guide them into a better future? It's a matter of shifting their, their thought patterns. <clears throat> At that point in life, and I think most of us have gone through periods in our life like that, our focus on everything that's wrong, everything that we have to do, everything that we need, and we forget about what we already have. We forget about the tremendous potential that exists within us. So it's a matter of shifting their focus. To, from negative to positive, from dark to light, all right? And, and then as they express the gratitude, um, what they express gratitude for, they're going to attract more of. Yep, yep, I've definitely heard that before. Um, as far as expressing gratitude for things, I, I remember reading sometime before that if you are sitting down to write out a gratitude list, which some of us will do from time to time, if you can only come up with two or three things, and those are the only things that you feel you're grateful for, an interesting idea is to consider all the different things in your life that you would be disappointed if you lost. And those are the things that should also be on your gratitude list. I mean, just having, like you said, food in the pantry that was delivered through a lot of different channels. If, if you would like to keep it, be grateful for it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, having indoor plumbing is, is something to be grateful yeah. for. Uh, being able to be in a house that keeps you warm in the winter. Yeah. Is something to be grateful for. So, so many wonderful things to be grateful for. Well, I, I was hoping here, part of my, or a major part of my intent was to help people become aware of that that is not subject to the five senses. That um, to become appreciative of that and express gratitude is going to make us more aware of them, of, of all of these, these different types of beings and energies. And as we do that, I hopefully we'll begin to communicate a little more with them and be open to have them communicate with us. So we become a part of a oneness that's much, much greater than just this, what's in this physical world. Right, right. And, and I think that was one of the things that really struck me the most in your talk was just the, the multi-levels of spirit and soul and thinking about how we are connected to the entire universe. That was wonderful. So this is probably a good time to open the floor if anyone else has any questions for Carl. Uh, Michael Joy? I have. Um, I had a couple of things that came to me as I was listening to Carl and I was writing them down. 
um, as he was talking about going to at, you know, our own soul, which would go to our Christ itself, which would go to the one higher and so on and so forth. What I saw in my mind were like cones and they all had this string that went up through the top of them mm. and that uh, uh, like my own soul was a cone and covered by my Christed cone and cover and so on and so on and so on. So when you ask for something in prayer or our gratitude for something at the soul level, it would seems like it would automatically go to the Christ level and from the Christ level, it would, it would just continue on up and whether we're ready to receive the answer or receive whatever it is that we're asking for. Um, prayer doesn't change God, it changes us. And it seems like that's when you set in motion um, that very thing coming to you. And then when you add like for the highest or and best, um, um, it, it just, it expands it. And it's not going to come if it's not for the highest and best of everyone concerned. And it, it also makes me think, you know, we were, I think most of us were taught when we were kids, you say grace before a meal, uh, you say your prayers before you go to bed at night. And to this just kind of, it be, they became rope prayers. Yeah. But this, to me, it's, starting to make sense that that we do this like you said about the food um and thinking about everything from the seed in the ground all the way up to what brought that food to your table um if you can even if what came to me was just like put the plate in light and send it back on the timeline <laughs> and, and be grateful for it just would just it increase the energy of that food and what it can do for you and with you in your body. And the same with, I took a class from a guy that said, don't listen to the news before you go to bed at night. <laughs> he said that whatever you have running in your mind, as you fall asleep, it will be with you all night long and you'll wake up with it in the morning. And that's why we say our prayers at night before we go to sleep. And, and so it just seems, I just had this whole image of whether I can conceive of whatever it is, the blessing I'm asking for, and I'm not ready that, that it just automatically goes up through those cones, so to speak, to the highest level, the creator of all life, and eventually comes back through yeah. that process. And when I'm ready to receive it at this level, I, I will receive it. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a good also, analogy. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's also one that will be implanted into the earth. It will mm -hmm. go into the earth plane. So then it manifests upon the earth plane for you. Okay. So you're taking this up, but it, it comes back down. Yeah. And with your intention, I mean, you don't have to say it. It's just a matter of when you do this and set it up that that is your intention, that eventually it come back the way it's meant to be. And that's when it gets grounded back into the earth and then it manifests before your eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this I just want to get, offer gratitude for the talk tonight because it was, it really was impactful for me. Thank you. Thank you. Infinite gratitude. Infinite gratitude. Infinite gratitude. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Carl and Ultron, this is Pete. I want to thank you for your uh, wonderful uh, pre presentation, Carl, on gratitude. I'm so grateful for you and Ultron in my life. Thank and uh, grateful also for uh, for John and Nancy Davis, a uh, fellowship, everybody on the call tonight, Alan, Rose, Lori, Michael Joy, Barbara, Lori Joy. You're all wonderful people, beautiful people. You're right. And you're, Hello, you're Pete. To Pete. I got a joke for you. What, what was what? What did the what did Jesus speak the last words at the Last Supper? Do you know? No. He said, he said if you want to get in the picture on this side of the table. <laughs> <laughs> did you get it? 
I didn't uh, hear him. If you want, you want to get in the picture, get in this side of the ta table. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm go. around this side. Yep. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <not> enough. <laughs> that was good. After you knew what you were saying. <laughs> but by the way, I want I want to give kudos to Ultron's book, Key of Life, and also uh, Carl's book, such and beautiful books. I recommend highly you get those books. They're beautiful books. There you go, Rose. There you go. Across. Thank you. We'll, we'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be grateful. I'm grateful, I'm grateful for chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Archer. And it came this week. And Archer, and I didn't get your talk on the day you gave it, but I looked, but I went back. And it was wonderful. And I'm wearing my onk now. <laughs> Good. Yes, yes. You're all onked up, eh? <laughs> I'm all onked up, right. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying thank you, but I really am grateful for everything that all of you are yes. sharing, really, not only within yourself, but upon the planet. Because yes. you're all yes. gifts to, the, to our planet Earth, you know? And... Your hearts are so wide open, and it's just, it's, we very, really are blessed, blessed that we have you in our lives. Carl, uh, we, right we, back we, at you. We go back a long time, buddy. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. We do. Many, many, many years ago. And I want to thank you for everything you've done for so many people. You are really a prototype of unconditional love and service. And your service is so multifaceted. You reach so many souls on so many levels. And I'm just, Nancy and I are just honored to be yours and your beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. This wonderful, this, we go way, way back. We do. The, the 70s, the se late well, 70s. 44 years, my dears. Oh. 44 years? 40. Well, maybe 43, because we were married in 76. And then okay. I, I didn't come up, he was already up here, but. I came in 77, so 43 years. We'll be married, actually, 44 years on the 17th of December. So. Wow, congratulations. How many years? Happy yeah, anniversary. Wow. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you... A lot, of, a lot of what you were saying, what you were projecting, because you're exactly the same way. And you and I, we, we, we're brothers. We really are. And I'm sure we've been physical brothers in other lifetimes and we're cut out of the same cloth. So well, let's call each other bro. Okay. <laughs> uh, bro. So next yeah. time we talk, bro. They're, they're having a bromance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bromance. That's cute. Bromance. You know, I don't Not know. Not quite that far. <laughs> I don't know. I know Ortrin would remember this, but I don't know if anybody else knows. And I, I think it was quite amazing that Carl and John got together and they wrote a a message to all the world leaders, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We must have a copy of that. Do you guys have a copy of that? Somewhere. I don't have one. I remember doing it, though. Yeah. Well, that looks what I'm getting. Did you send it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, what what the interesting thing about it was uh, that Carl had, he woke up in the morning and he said he he got in a meditation that we should, you know, do this um, world meditation. And of course, we didn't really know who to contact. Well, John, he had various lists. And John, actually, I think he may even have dreamt it also. But anyhow, so the two of them composed this letter. And then John had the list and he sent it out to all these different groups. Yeah. Hundreds of letters went out. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I don't know where you got all these names, but. You know, I can see it. It was on pink. It was on pink stationery. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I really believe that was, you know, you, you hear about these people that started the world meditation and that was later, much later than when John and Carl did this. Mm -hmm. so That's I, probably I, right about the time Coptic became universal. embracing yeah. all yeah, that, 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 John, that, that was about 1980, 70, yeah. 80, I think. 80s, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. It was in the early, early. early. Uh -huh. And see, I think that's why we were meant to join it too, is because we were tended to be more universal in our 
outlook. Yep. And so that was the timing for us to become part of Coptics. Was a, for all peoples, time. for all peoples and for all nations. Yeah. We are, mm -hmm. we are all one family. And, and we're, that's here one. The, we're here for the benefit of everybody on this planet. Right. In Zimbabwe, there are brothers and sisters. All children on earth are Zimbabwe, our children. We are there to help them and send them love and light. Mm -hmm. That's right. John. We're, we're also here to, to, to levitate tables, aren't we? <laughs> you remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the two boys here. Oh. These two boys, John and Carl, they really did. They were able to lift the table. Yeah. Without, yeah. without, without, without our hands without around hands the power. Around. And they moved we got to tell the story. We were in Florida. Uh -huh. And Carl and I were with a group of people. And we were there, and Carl and I said, what are we doing here? So we all broke into groups of four, and we each had a table. And this guy said, I want you to put your hands just six inches above the table and just think about lifting that table. So I'm thinking to myself, this is crazy. It's unbelievable. So all we did, and we said these certain words. And all of a sudden, I looked out of the corner of my eye, and that was Carl and his three friends, and they were walking with his table around the room. <laughs> they were the first in, time in to suspension. get In suspension. In suspension. I said, oh, my, this is unbelievable. But, and that was the inspiration for us to lift our table. <laughs> yeah. I tell this story, people don't believe it. <laughs> but it's true, isn't it, Carl? Yeah. Share the words. <laughs> and where were Orchard and Nancy? They were out eating dinner. <laughs> <That's right>. uh, <laughs> oh, that was one of the most memorable moments of our life. Couldn't we? And we, we weren't high, John, but we got the table high. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, the guests, the, one of the guest speakers that day could do that, couldn't he? I can't remember yeah. his name. Yeah. He's the spiritualist minister. And I... And, I think he came from England, to tell you the truth. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was truly a memorable sense. experience. <laughs> that makes sense to me. I was at a spiritualist woman's retreat oh, a couple decades ago, and we did what they called table tipping, which was similar to what you're talking mm -hmm. about. And that's why I was asking if you could <laughs> share the words. Do you, know, do you remember the words? I don't remember the words. I just I remember know. Carl. No. <laughs> do, you, do you remember the words? Michael I don't. Do I don't. Oh, yeah, see? Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't think it's the words that are important. It's I think it's your, your the thought that you have and the emotion you're sending into that thought. And the belief behind yeah. it. That's yeah. right. Because As Thomas Bay said, I believe, I believe, yeah. I yeah. believe. Yeah. And the table came up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so around to raise the table, just say, I believe, I believe. <laughs> and, and you had the right group of people together. You had the huh? right group of people together. Yeah. Because I remember yes. Carl and I doing a class over at Unity on Walker, and Carl, you know, wanted the group to move this glass, you know, or something like that. He wanted them to focus on that, and, for, and it didn't happen. But I know, I knew why. It was because half the people didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Some that may have believed, but the other part didn't believe. So mm -hmm. interacting each other. But the, the things that I remember about the table tipping is that the people who weren't sitting at the table and were around us, they were singing. They were raising the energy in the room by singing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it just it goes to show you that the spiritual path isn't always that serious. <laughs> Someone who who I know from a long time ago who ch was channeling Jesus um, told me that the he said the first thing you need to know about Jesus is that he has an incredible sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. That's where Pete got his sense of humor from. <laughs> <laughs> we are family. <laughs> and sisters and me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, so it really is grateful. Well, I'm grateful that we're together. You know, yeah. I'm yes, right. Together that we have these um, times that, you know, we're have come together, even though we're, even though we're not together always, but in person, we know that we're always together. Yeah. Yep. It's out there. Yeah, we're, we're together in heart and spirit. 
Mm-hmm. That's right. Connection. Once you're connected, you're always connected, no. you know? Right. Mm-hmm. right. So you've got your work to do mm-hmm. uh, and you're doing a great job. A lot of, you know. Yeah, congratulations, Carol Norton. You're doing a wonderful job of service. We're, we're just honored to know you. And John, you and Nancy are too. Right. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Well, we're just sorry that it all has to be on Zoom these days. Um, <laughs> you're reaching no. more people. And so I'm thankful that you're on Zoom. Otherwise, I wouldn't be with That's you. That's true, Barbara. Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, um, thank you. But I, I do miss uh, the fellowship in person with people. I, I do too. I'm a I'm a people person. Mm-hmm. I like being around people. I miss chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> we did Zoom Thanksgiving uh, this year. That was a, a new thing for us. Well, you know this this whole virus situation. People are focusing on what the, what they the, they're missing. You know what the changes that they don't like, mm-hmm. but. I, I would really suggest that we we also focus on what we're gaining from the virus. We're getting a lot. It's it, it's really forcing us to uh, examine the way we live by forcing us into a different way of life. Mm-hmm. And I think that in the, historically, it's they're going to look back at this period. And see, oh look at this is this is this is what's changed. This change, the attitudes, the values, the beliefs of people, I think, are being very positively affected by this. So, uh, yes, we're paying a price, but I think uh, we're going to get something for our money. <laughs> Recently, I broke a code. It's the eleven eleven code, and this this eleven eleven. Uh, is very important. It's a new beginning of the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual levels. Now, the interesting part of it is 2020 adds up to 40, and 40 is the number of the mind. And we have the mind. And if we can pray every day and think this is a new a new cycle, new cycle. And one of the things that's going to be done is COVID-19 by in several months is going to be off the earth. It's resolved. It's done. Mm-hmm. And if we could just say, just give that prayer once a day, because this 1111 is really powerful. But then that key was that 40 means you add up numerically. It's our minds. Our minds can open it up yeah. and get rid of this COVID-19 thing. Mm-hmm. And it will be, it will happen. It will manifest. I was listening to a unity minister saying that metaphysically, we hear we hear 40 days and 40 nights. We hear that number 40 in the Bible mm. quite a bit. There we and, go. and metaphysically, they're saying it means as long as it takes. So um, 2020, meaning 40, might be that's our 40 days and 40 nights are up. And we're going into something new. Yeah, that's how and, I used to see and it. It's our, and it's in our minds. Exactly. That's the power. Well, that we have that it's power. It's in our hearts and our minds. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I really, one of my goals for myself is to stop working out of my mind and to stop working out of my heart and begin working out of my heart mind. So uh-huh. combining the two, exactly. working out of both of them together and hopefully all of the time. The other thing that I see with that, excuse me, go ahead, Barbara. I was going to say on the 20th of December, there is a new planetary alignment that is supposed to make a great change. And um, ARE, the Association for Research and Enlightenment, the Edgar Cayce Group, has a 24-hour meditation day that's all going to be live online um, for everybody to join in who wishes to. But Wherever you are, whether you're joining in online or anywhere on the 20th of December, meditate and think peace, think love, think all of your positive thoughts for all of your friends, think healing for the whole planet. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. Thank you. 
And, and John, are we going to have a December 31st um, World Healing Meditation? It'll, it'll sure. have to be on Zoom. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that this, I don't know, it's probably close to 35 years now with Cordis Foundation. Although, Michael Joy, we usually have about eight people come to the center. So we could logistically sit the six feet apart and wear masks and do it there. We'll have to talk about I it. still think we should do it on Zoom. I think we get more people joining us. Because oh, yeah, true. I do too. In the morning. I vote for I can do it on with my get on Zoom, but they don't want to drive out, get dressed and drive out and come there and be there. Yeah. So if I can do it in my pajamas, I'll be here. <laughs> well, hey, Rose. Do you yeah, think the nice thing about Zoom is you don't necessarily have to engage the camera, so you don't actually have to be presentable. Do you, do you think that it will be done from the UN on that day? Um, the organization that originated that th this is being done not just by the Coptics but all around the world, right? Yes, it is. Well, the UN on it's December twenty or September twenty. It was this year. They have their International Day of Nonviolence, where everybody, you know, does that. But this December 31st was developed by um, John Price. Um, mm -hmm. he, he wrote a book called Super Beans, and he started the Quartus Foundation, and they started this, um, I don't know ex mm -hmm. the exact year, early 80s, and it's been a worldwide meditation ever since and everybody joins in at 12 is it 12 a.m yeah. Greenwich time Greenwich time yes at seven that's seven a.m that's why we meet at six so we can do right. some preliminaries and be ready to just go in at seven yeah barbara i would like to go back to the december 20th and 21st the channel information, and this is coming from a half a dozen different sources that I personally have, have followed for years and respect. And they're all honing in on this period, December 20th and 21st. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're saying from their perspective, uh, it could well be, uh, there's a real possibility that we will have what's been called the flash mm -hmm. occurring at that time. But if it doesn't occur, they're, they're, they're predicting a lot of um, really high frequency energy coming into the earth for long enough that it's going to alter human DNA, in fact, all DNA on the planet, and, and other, having other very significant positive effect. And I think it behoves each of us that are, that are, going, that are listening to this to be aware that this can be, it may well be, a very, very special time in the history of the planet and a, 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 a stepping stone in the, the, the planetary ascension. And for us to be as ready as we can be uh, so that we can tune in at a high level of consciousness, become a part of uh, what is uh, happening and particularly grounding this energy uh, through our physical, mental, emotional, and soul bodies, grounding it into the collective human consciousness, grounding it into the planet itself. And this could well be one of the reasons that we are here on this particular day. We have a special job to do. So just be aware of it. And that is a Sunday, so we will be having a 6 o'clock uh, program that day. Good. For those of you who know... For those of you who know a lot about this December 20th, I've only heard about it. Um, scientifically speaking, are they giving this um, a positive um, experience or are they uh, scientifically creating uh, some kind of uh, fear? No, this is a gravitational pull with all the planets aligning what do are the scientists saying about it oh. nothing. nothing nothing i'm aware of well what really? i would like to know is barb i i just heard of this i know nothing about the details and i'm wondering if you can communicate with 
maybe the Coptic Center or whatever, and we can all get information about this. Like, when does it start, um, and right. and what we're focusing on? Because if we have a group focus, it makes it that much more powerful. Yeah. And one other question I'd ask Carl about the DNA change: Would that mean that the virus would be gone and we wouldn't need a vaccine? That's a super good question, and I don't know the answer to that. But my personal feeling is that if you keep your vibration high enough, you're going to be safe from it because you're functioning in a different octave than the virus is functioning. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mohammed well, Bey says that if your vibration is high enough and if your body is in balance, that you will not get ill. Yeah. If you keep your mental, your physical, and your spiritual all in balance, you can avoid illness. You know, the man who thinks he's a um, reincarnation of Edgar Casey. I can't think of his name right now. David, the, David Wilcox. Sorry? Yeah. David Wilcox is the only person I've heard talk about the flash. And then I asked John, I asked other people, no one had heard about the but flash. It is a, what, what, well, Tell this us about week, the flash. Yeah, that's what this the, week the ARE just made the announcement of this 20 hour, 24 hour meditation. It, it, they just came out with it on Thursday that there will be. So there's a link there. You, you can sign up and say that you're going to participate if you want to. Um, okay, but he said exactly what Carl said that there's going to be a flash that's going to help us to. Um, Okay, so here, do you want the background on the flash? Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's coming from the central sun of our galaxy, and it will be the highest wave of energy the Earth has ever experienced. And it's going to last, uh, it's going to be so very grief, you're not, grief, you're not going to know if you've seen it or not. Is it, was it just my imagination, or did it actually happen? It's only going to be about a fraction of a second in length. But, and probably if it were much lo longer than that, it would be blinding. But being so short, the eye is not going to have time to adjust to it. But uh, it, it's, it's just, as I say, the, the highest frequency of energy that's, that the earth has ever received. And it's going to be a, an instantaneously uplift in terms of, of uh, vibration and frequencies. And it's going to have, a, a, well, it, it's going to help the earth and it's going to, everything that's living on the earth has DNA and it's going to, to alter that. And how it's going to alter it, I'm not really sure, but it may open additional codons in our DNA as an example, or it may even give us extra strands of DNA. I don't know, but it, it is going to be an uplift. It's, there's no negative news associated with it. They said the people that are uh, functioning at the higher levels of consciousness, it will be a very positive experience. For those that are functioning at the lower levels of consciousness, uh, it's, it's going to be uh, challenging for them because the, the, the uh, frequency of the earth has make this will move up more than they will be able to move up because they're not going to be that receptive of that energy. Can I just say that um, I've always felt like as you come up scale in your energy, as you raise your energy, you probably have some energies that are out of balance or that you're moving away from. And those things have to leave your body so it can see, feel, seem like you have a cold, a flu or whatever, as these things are leaving your body. Yeah. So when, when we are, we sick or are we in a healing crisis or are we raising our frequencies and what doesn't need to be there anymore it's cleansing so there's a whole lot of things sometimes being sick i've i've often thought that that you know just regular like cold flu kind of symptoms are giving my immune system some exercise it's, they're actually strengthening my immune system good point so um you know, I think you have to be careful about that never getting sick kind of a thing because um, it sounds like you're blaming yourself for being sick. 
<laughs> and you don't want to go there. Exactly. Exactly. That's something that I used to feel guilty about that all the time when I was early. I'm going to say early into unity because there's a real thing about not being sick. And it's almost like if you were sick, there's something really wrong with you. You know, you, you are more good enough. But that's not true because uh, we are working with energy vibration and we're here to transmute energy vibrations and bring them to a higher level of consciousness. So in order for us to do that, really and truly, we need to experience them. We never experience anything. We're not going to transmute anything. So you need to understand what you're doing. You need to understand that, oh, there's, oh, okay, there's an energy here that I'm working with. And then, you know, with your... Uh, intention with it, your desire with your focus of light and love then you can change that so and not everyone has to we all have different things we're doing this for in there are zillions of vibratory frequencies on this planet and there are certain ones that we're all have a little bit of it and our dna maybe is what tends to have us go these different directions but there is a purpose for all of it i believe we talked about another one of our shows recently, we talked about ancestral uh, cleansing. Remember? Uh, um, do you remember that, Michael Joy? Yeah. And the same thing with that, you know, uh, the things that we carry within our DNA and the things that we are focusing on uh, changing, you know, and helping our ancestors so that they can also be rid of whatever vibrations are no longer needed. So, you know, with that, you experience things. So it'd be wonderful. I mean, and I don't know if it'd be wonderful or not, because like I said, if you're you're so neutral all the time, experience nothing, then, you know, why even be on the earth plane? Because we are here so that we can understand both sides of the coin, you know, both positive and negative. I'm not saying go there and stay there too long, you know, but to understand it, to be able to see what it's all made of that's really what the creator wanted to do also that's what jesus did when he came to the planet he wanted to experience this planet and the energies on it and so that he could he he could understand right yeah and so a few a few years back carl was talking about this at at your house when you had one of your meetings mm -hmm. and i had kind of a vision of it ahead of time or that time or whatever i was just overwhelmed with joy and i felt like everybody came out of their houses and they just like everybody was just wow and and just love and joy and you know whatever it was and it was called the flash then or something like that and i just remember having such a and i don't usually get the things like you do you know but i actually i i felt it i just i couldn't stop beaming or whatever it was just it was so wonderful and i you know i still i still remember it you know that it was associated with that word so if it if it happens like that i'll be thrilled you know because that's the way i felt at the time well if you felt it that there's some reality to it yeah, yeah right because i especially i don't get that type of thing very often so it's and was i still like the harmonic convergence no this was after 2012 oh this, uh, but it was at their house when we were having one of the regular monthly meetings. I remember where I was sitting. I remember who was around me. I, you know, the whole thing. I remember I couldn't, I felt like I had to shout hallelujah, you know, or whatever. So, you know, it was really just, it was a wonderful feeling. So That's wonderful. And John, mm -hmm. you sent us something. It was at least a year ago about something that the, um, was it the seismic people? They they heard something or something. There was a a certain period of time that they had never seen before. Was it on seismology? You know the earthquake stuff. Or I kind of re recognize what you're talking about. Something that was felt all over the world. I don't oh, remember yeah. the details. Uh, the yeah. the yeah, sent us an email. Yeah, they heard uh, the ringing of a bell. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was it. Mm -hmm. All over the world, it was heard at a certain time. It was November 11 again. It was on an, yeah, it was November 11. November 11. Last year or the year before? I think it was the year before. Yeah, at least that far. But we, we have to really recognize the importance of this 1111 thing. It is incredible. Think of it the beginning of a new physical, 
mental, emotional, and spiritual level. And then you had, uh, well, one year was uh, an 11 year, too. Of course, that's 2011. That makes it different, doesn't it? And John, that makes it a four day, too. Yeah, exactly. Well, the thing that when I, when I was exactly. you know thinking about, you know, you said the 2020, and then there was the 11 11. So it's 11 11. So that's, if you, let's just say it's four and four, right? Which is the eight. And to me, when I think of an eight, that means infinity. It means as above, so below. It's bringing that heaven and earth together. Mm -hmm. That's because right. And that's why we should be praying for the power mm -hmm. of the new beginning. And it's all positive to change this whole this whole situation we're going through right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> well, there's definitely lots of um, interesting things happening right now, isn't there? And uh, yeah, and to recognize that everything is for the highest good. And by doing that, then we are able to, I mean, yes, we may have some aches and pains going along with it, but in the long run, you know, this is going to have a, a good outcome, a great outcome. Oh, yeah. yeah. The date you're having this for this uh, event, uh, Carl, is, is the 20th, 20, 20th yeah, and 21st? It, yeah, it's a winter solstice. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I've heard that from other things too. Right. Yeah. But you're relating it to that same word event. So that's, I was thinking it was two separate things. Okay. So, um, Carol, are you getting literature on this that you could send out? You know, uh, most of the information that I'm getting, I'm not able to forward. Oh, because it, it's, it, I'm getting it from websites, and I don't know how to forward off of someone else's website. Okay. But I, if, if you've got paper and pencil, I'm going to suggest that a lot of this is, is it's channeling, and it's it's being reported. The channelings are being reported on um, Sananda.website. Sananda okay. Okay. That was the website that Hans talked about when he did his yeah. presentation. Okay, yeah. it it it's got it's very po uh, powerful positive information coming from really from really high sources. Is that S A N A, Sanan S A N A N D A? Yes, Sananda is a, a a name for the man Jesus. Okay. Is it Sananda.com? Sananda.website. Oh, Sananda.website, Jim. That's what the, the link is? Yes. Yeah, I'm putting it into the chat for everyone to see. Oh, good. So there's a link to the website that they're talking about. I, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And please, whenever you're reading well, anything, but especially channel information, uh, be discerning. Uh, yeah. you, you, and what you want to discern is what level of consciousness is it coming from? Always a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, if it's loving or if it's fear. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, did the, uh, I did the numbers on 1220 <laughs> this year. And with, with numbers, it goes this way it's kind of a descending down, pyramid descending pyramid and the energy is light l-i-g-h-t now we have the upper pyramid you know what that is light wow this is really powerful and when you put them together you've got the six-pointed star exactly. <laughs> yeah we have we have to do something like this uh, as a group or groups to get this out here and 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 have something special on twelve twenty. We we are being called. This is no coincidence. Sounds like a Merkaba. And so, just to kind of close this out on a good, positive, high level of energy, let's go ahead and do a little prayer. And for this, we'll just kind of relax in our seats. We'll. Take a nice deep breath and let go of all the tension that may have accumulated over time. 
and we'll clear our minds and open ourselves up to the divine spirit that is within us, around us, throughout the entire universe. And we'll express gratitude for what we have, for who we are, for the connection that we have to the divine and through through the divine to the entire universe and express gratitude for the experiences that we have through life, for the experiences that life presents to us, those experiences that we enjoy and those experiences that make us stronger and more capable of fulfilling our mission here on earth. And within the space of divine gratitude, let us imagine all the people that we're connected to and all the people that they're connected to and how this web of energy connects us to all life beings on this planet and beyond. And this net, this divine net of energy that holds us, that binds us together, that provides us with support in so many different ways, so many different ways that we're aware of and those that we're unaware of, that protects us, that allows us to experience life in many wondrous ways. And let's just send out a wave of gratitude through this network of energy so that it touches all life forms and allow it to bless the universe. And as it always happens, whatever we send out, we also receive and allow ourselves to be open to receive, to be open to receive this divine energy, this divine blessing that is returning back to us. And just sit in this divine feeling for a moment and allow it to change us on a fundamental cellular level and allow it to increase our vibratory frequencies so that we can reach even higher and closer to the divine day by day by day. Oh, this is wonderful. What a wonderful evening. <clears throat> Thank you all. Thank you. We'll return in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.